so yeah, um, I don't want to make funny stuff, but uh, it's a little more serious. Um, basically, yeah, um, I was just thinking about this. This is something I talked to people about before, and uh, you know, I just thought I'd make a recording about it. Um, I'm still kind of suffering the consequences in kind of like a partial way. I mean, I'm, my license is still suspended, but basically what I was going to talk about was uh, DUI laws and the whole DUI system in general, um, and predominantly um, how I feel it's like a negative thing in a lot of different ways, and how before it really arose, uh, you know, it was, things were just a little better, I think. Um, basically, in my opinion, I don't think that DUI laws uh, really save any lives. I don't think they do anything but unnecessarily burden hard-working people and basically honest, innocent people who really don't do anything but, um, you know, enjoy themselves a little bit like everyone else, and they just kind of got in, in, in either a DUI trap or, you know, whatever other circumstance they ended up getting their DUI in. And uh, I really think that, you know, it kind of stems back to that Reagan drawer, and it all goes back to that, the, uh, the Reagan war on drugs, you know, and how that was all kind of like, I mean, they weren't necessarily like, <clears throat> I guess his presidency was kind of over around the early 90s, or maybe even before that, and all kind of perpetuated and kind of continued on through the Bush and Clinton years and progressively got worse, um, but it all kind of started then. And, uh, you know, before that, um, not that I was alive then, but from what people told me, obviously, um, I think things were basically a little bit more um, relaxed, you know, and uh, I think things were a little bit more smooth. Like, you always hear old people tell stories, well, back in the day, you know, if you were drunk on a country road, and swerving a little bit, you know, uh, the cop would just tell you to go home and whatever. He wouldn't even cite you. He would just basically, you know, go to work, go home. You really shouldn't be out driving. Um, that's a little bit whatever, you know, and that would have been the end of it. You know, but with today, you know, you, it's, it's this major legal procedure. And, you know, I mean, so many people nationally, locally, um, statewide, all kinds of different places for various different things get caught up in this system, and then they get perpetually, you know, put through the court system, put through rehabs, put through uh, uh, highway safety, you know, with all that, there's all expenses on the taxpayers, and not that I'm really, like, concerned about that, because, I mean, it's whatever, but, you know, it just kind of perpetuates a whole series of things in society that are really just, like, a waste in a lot of ways, because most people that go to those things anyway do continue to drink because they know it's bullshit, and whatever. Um, some of them do end up getting DUIs after in like third and fourth and fifth and whatever just because like there's really, you know, it's whatever. Um, I'm on number two. The first one was a really strange situation which I'm not even going to get into. Uh, they, they tried to put a whole bunch of different charges on me that ended up not sticking anyway. It was a whole big rigmarole and just a whole series of problems. It eventually resolved itself but uh, yeah that was the only thing I really did wrong and a lot of the other stuff just kind of got swept up with it, I and mean, it was just bullshit, it was like on the country, it was just totally absurd, and yeah, the second one was basically a stupid situation, too, that I really didn't deserve to get it, because I was basically acting responsibly at the time, um, there was a conflict at a party I was at, and I basically left to, uh, you know, get away from the negative tension that was building there, possibly into a violent situation, and I had kind of extricated myself and left to you know, um, act responsibly, and for that I was punished. It was kind of like something, like, allegorically to, like, something I saw, you see on an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm, where, um, this was not related to DUIs at all, but the, uh, <clears throat> you know, the main character, Larry David, he, uh, he was concerned, you know, about the limo driver sitting in the car being hungry. He'd taken some food out to him, it was like leftovers, and they didn't give him a plastic fork, so, you know, he did the next feasible thing and um, took the guy out of fork, like uh, a nice fork, a sterling silver fork or whatever because it was a fancy restaurant from the restaurant to give to him to let him use for a while and, you know, uh, whatever, and kind of, um, you know, the asshole maitre d' caught him and he was like, duh, 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 you shouldn't have taken that and stuff. And then, like, Larry David, I need to get, like, a citation and up here. And it's, like, just ridiculous. Like that. And it's kind of the similar thing with my situation. It was like, I was doing something responsible and I got in trouble. Like, that doesn't make sense, you know? Like, it doesn't make sense at all. Um, not that I, not for the second one, that, like, 
they didn't even keep me really. Um, I, I just went in, I was processed at the police station, I went home, and it was like months and months and months before anything legal happened, but I did have to go to drug and alcohol classes and whatever. But yeah, in general, I don't think um, that the laws aren't necessary. I think they burden tax payers. I think they um, damage people's ability to get jobs in some senses. You know, if you're a truck driver and you're off the clock and you get one, that ruins your career. If you're a delivery driver, pizza driver, um, a whole other series of things, it ruins your career. Um, which is not good. And in terms of other things, like even people that have like mobile businesses, like whatever, like plumbers that have to drive to locations that fucks them, uh, it fucks a whole bunch of other people too. And uh, you know, it's just really bad. I mean, obviously, it's not not everyone in the world gets a DUI. Not everyone drinks, but you know, it does affect enough people that it negatively affects the economy, in my opinion. Um, and I think that you know, removing the restriction you know, may be a positive thing to kind of dial it back to the way it was in like the late 60s, early 70s. And I think, uh, you know, it really is just a force for no good. Um, I think that when the people put the laws together, like Mothers Against Drunk Driving that lobbied for all that, I think they had good intentions with like protecting children. But on some other level, if your kid is playing in the street after, say, 9 o'clock, 2 a.m. when most people are drinking, um, you really are pretty much a bad parent and you shouldn't um, be concerned about people drinking and driving if you're letting your kid play in the street um, late at night. I mean, kids should really be in bed by then anyway. I mean, I know it's fucking the 21st century and people are retarded. I mean, look at the motherfuckers on Mari. But uh, yeah, I mean, realistically, uh, the whole thing is just a basic sham and I think um, just, you know, a lot of people get caught up in it, and a lot of people, you know, I think it's another, re another reason that they have the laws, which is kind of fucked up, is so it gives them an excuse to stop people and, like, run them through the system and check their shit to see if they're on probation and see if they have drugs and um, see if they have charges or see if they're on the run. Just anything, you know, just to fucking uh, fill the jails up or fucking run people through the fucking rehab system and populate the rehabs, populate the jails. And it really just perturbs me in a way. And I've really done everything I can in my power to, like, you know, avoid this whole thing in general. Like, I basically, um, if I do, like, drink, I, I drink on foot or in my home anymore just because, like, not that I could because my license is still in suspension. But basically, yeah, I don't think... Um, you know, it's like even viable to even like tr like try to go to a bar um, that's like uh, you know off in some distant place and like I mean I don't understand that like think about it if they're allowing establishments to put themselves in business at a distance from walking distance to a majority of their clientele's homes, you know, um, because not everyone's going to go in the bar and have just two drinks, and not everyone has a friend that will designate be a designated driver, so that kind of disenfranchises a lot of people um, that, you know, really are, um, you know, alcohol enthusiasts who, you know, have friends that they meet at the bar or, you know, are a patron to the bar and know the people that own it and um, other things. And it really inhibits people, you know, and it kind of hurts that industry too, which is a shame, you know, because I really don't think that that's fair to bars, you know, to force them to establish themselves in, you know, sidewalked communities that, because um, there's a lot of communities in my area that aren't sidewalked, um, particularly in outlying areas where there are bars, which, I mean, in the bars, to, for them, for the bars to establish themselves at um, distance, which is not, like, there's a bar, for instance, it's called uh, the American Cafe. Um, I've been there with friends. Luckily, every time I've gone there, I've had a designated driver. Um, but, yeah, basically, it's not in walking distance of any residences. 
So it's kind of a fucked up situation. And there's other ones in the area, which I'm not going to mention. Um, similar circumstances. Um, so realistically, for these establishments to, you know, be, at, like, set up, like, geographically as they are, and I know it's even worse out west where things are even more spread out, um, but yeah, I mean, I just can't see how this situation, you know, exists where, you know, it's kind of like a, a setup in a way, you know, where, you know, they have these bars that aren't reachable, you know, by walking distance, and then, you know, expect people to patronize them and participate economically in, in the society with them, and then penalize them for using the service after they leave. Like, it doesn't make sense. Um, it's just a strange, kind of stupid, like, catch-22 in a way, you know, um, but uh, it... It really just boggles my mind that things are the way they are. And it, I'm just a little, you know, disgruntled about the whole thing and a little bit confused. I mean, obviously, I didn't really have any control in, like, you know, making any kind of decision about it myself. I mean, because I was always, it was obviously put together way before I was ever allowed to, you know, participate in any kind of decision about it. You know, obviously, things are handled by representatives and, like, you just vote for the representative and the representative makes the decision you know, or votes, and he, and he he contributes a small percentage of the decision to the decision, so, like, you're, like, this fractional, like, you just had a vote, and, like, all you did was, have like, pick the guy, and he's, and it's, like, up to him beyond that to make any kind of rational, rational decisions, and your input really doesn't matter, and, you know, it's, like, the whole thing is just a big, confused mess anyway, so, but, yeah, I mean, like I said, it's it's really like just just absurd how the whole thing is arranged, um, and I, I just can't believe how many people I know that have suffered from this. You know, they're, they're, they're like it just made their lives so much more difficult unnecessarily for like a, such a small thing that's basically not really in any way detrimental. You know, I mean. Okay, alcohol is a to an intoxicant, and it's da it does damage the body. I will admit that on some level. If you drink for four years, you're probably going to get cirrhosis, if you drink heavily anyway. But, you know, which I don't really do. But, you know, I mean, like any, you can, you can get killed in an airplane, or you can get killed on a train, or you can get killed on a construction site, you can die through medical malpractice, or you can, anything. Anything can happen. There's, you know, like a thousand and one ways to die. You know, it's like, and there's one thing, like, impedes so many people's lives, you know. You know, it's like I went in there, and there's like, it's like a revolving door. You know, I was there, I was there for like six weeks at the, whatever you want to call it. I guess it was a highway safety school or some kind of thing of that, like, whatever. And, you know, it was just like, I was there, and then I was like the new guy. And, like, two weeks later, there was a bunch of people were gone. There's some new people. And then, and then eventually, like, I was like the last person, um, from when I when I got there, and there's no one else left from when I got there, and then I left, and then whole new people, and then the same, and like it was just like a revolving door, and like they just kept filling it up, like it was crazy, you know, like just crazy how many people were going through this, and this was just in one location. They had six other locations that did the same exact thing, and in my city, and my city's only a moderately sized city, and uh, you know Pittsburgh, um, and. You know, fuck it. I mean, there's really nothing else I can say. I mean, just something needs to be done about this. Like, some kind of commission needs to be formed. You know, where there's, like, some kind of, um, you know, attempt to repeal this and reevaluate it and really say, you know, who are we really helping by doing this? You know, I mean, obviously, like, the thing I said with, with the children and the mothers against drunk driving, you know, like, that's not, that's not something that should happen anyway. You know, I don't really think it does that there's kids out playing in the middle of the street that get hit anyway. You know, if it does, it's the fucking kids' fault for being stupid, and the stupid parents for letting them fucking be out at night. You know, and, and, and obviously wrecks happen, but there's a lot more people die in just sober wrecks than drunk wrecks. So, you know, most wrecks happen while people are sober. So, you know, what are you preventing? What are you preventing? 
So, you know, um, I don't know. I just think something has to be done about this. Um, obviously, there's other issues at hand in society that need to be dealt with, but this one is definitely significant.